strangely. Why, what's she doing? She's been standing in the garden for the last ten minutes, sniffing a flower and smiling to herself. That's not strange, Mary. She's just confused by the sudden stirrings of long-forgotten emotions. She thought it would never happen again. It's knocked her all of a heap. What has? Love. Love? Mm. She's staring at that flower and thinking of me, Mary. She was pulling the petals off. <laughs> well, you see what I mean? He loves me, he loves me not, he loves me. Cupid's dart has struck home at last. <laughs> Cupid's dart. Are you sure? She hasn't said anything to me. Oh, she will. She hasn't realised herself yet. The poor dear doesn't know what's hit her. But how can she be in love with you, Howard? You aren't even speaking to each other. I know. And it's working. Is it? <laughs> but it's quite deliberate, Mary, this icy indifference on my part. It's plan B. Oh. What was plan A? Ardent pursuit, flattery, constant phone calls, flowers, and then... Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. And then she wonders, what's wrong with me? Why doesn't he find me attractive anymore? Am I losing my looks? She's confused, she loses her confidence, and then... What? When she's at her lowest ebb... I smile at her. <laughs> it's like the sun breaking through the clouds. The whole world lights up. Are you sure, Howard? It never fails, Mary. Could I have some more coffee? Yes. Now, she wants to talk to you about it, you know, woman to woman, and ask your advice. Would you tell her there's still a chance? A chance? Yes, to rekindle that passionate flame that once burnt within me. That passionate flame that once burnt within you? Mm. I'll try to remember that, Howard. Go on. But I think you're taking an awful lot for granted. Oh, she's here. Oh, what did I tell you? Mm. Hello, Laura. Hello, Mary. Hello, Howard. Oh, good morning, Laura. <laughs> Lovely morning. Uh, do excuse me, but I am reading this rather interesting article in the Times. I'm glad he's gone. I wanted to talk to you, Mary. I need your advice. Advice? Yes. Mary. Do you think I should be contemplating marriage again at my age? At your age? But you're still young, Laura. Why shouldn't you marry again? <laughs> well, it's such a gamble, Mary. I had a good marriage. A very happy one. I just don't know if I want to try again. And Well, I'm used to being on my own now. And I hardly know him. But surely that's the excitement, getting to know him. <laughs> marriage can be a great adventure. Not everyone's. Mine isn't. But it can be. And I've seen you two together. Oh, I thought I'd been very discreet. It's not too late to rekindle that flame that once burnt within. I beg your pardon. My advice is follow your heart. Oh, I don't know. I haven't really made up my mind, but... Oh, he is so terribly good-looking. Oh, yes. I'm not sure I can trust myself to be alone with him. Look, Mary, would you all come round for drinks this evening, sort of help break the ice? Of course, we'd love to, Laura. Good. I didn't realise I'd given myself away so much. Oh, I'm so confused. Well, falling in love at my age, it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong door. Hello, Howard. See you all later, then. Bye. <laughs> what did I tell you? Terribly good-looking. I can't wait for this evening. <laughs> oh, aren't you ready yet, Trev? Well, how could I be ready? You were in that bathroom for two hours. What's the matter with those scales? They only registered 12 stone. They won't point to anything else. Well, that's all right. I only weigh 12 stone. <laughs> I'm keeping a strict check on my weight. When a man's contemplating marriage, he has to uh, keep in shape. He owes it to the woman of his choice to look his best. Thank heavens I bronze easily. <laughs> it's going to be very nice on the Riviera this time of year. No, you're not planning the honeymoon already, are you? Haven't you done enough to that poor woman? What about all that money you had off her through early investments? Well, don't you think I feel guilty about that? And I'm going to make it up to her. You're going to pay her back? Oh, better than that, I'm going to give her something far more valuable than money. Myself. <laughs> Laura, you look as lovely as ever. Oh, Carlo. Hello, Laura. Hello, Mary. Hello, Laura. Trevor. Oh, where's Howard? Isn't he coming? Laura, you look radiant. Thank 
you, Howard. Flowers for the fair, already wilting in the presence of your greater beauty. See how they hang their heads in shame. Howard, I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine, Count Montefiore. <laughs> No. He hasn't gone yet. <laughs> Who hasn't? Count Macaroni. <laughs> Never have left them alone. I shouldn't worry, Howard. He's only waiting for his car to take him back to the hotel. He's not going back to the hotel, Mary. He's got no intention of going back to the hotel tonight. You know what these Italians are like? Probably packed a clean shirt and a change of underwear hidden in that mobile flower bed he was carrying. <laughs> well, I shouldn't think Laura will ask him to stay. He's not waiting to be asked, Trev. <laughs> Leaving him alone with Laura was an open invitation to a man like that. They haven't got our self-control. He's probably leaping on her now with animal grunts. <laughs> Don't be silly, Howard. I thought he was elegant and charming. I love the way he called me Signora and made that little bow. A little oily charm goes a long way with you, doesn't it, Mary? <laughs> After all, what is he? An impoverished Italian nobleman on the make. It is full of them. You're not jealous, are you, Howard? Of course I'm not jealous. Just got Laura's interests at heart, that's all. And don't forget, our friend comes from the same country as Casanova, a man renowned for his heartless seduction of women. Well, all Italians aren't like that. Oh, I'm not so sure, Mary. Remember last year, when you got your bottom pinched in front of the Vatican? <laughs> that was different. I thought the Count had great dignity. I'm sure he'll behave impeccably. Don't forget, Italy was also the home of Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. And the Mafia. Don't forget the Mafia. Don't talk to me about Italians. Even the Pope's Polish. <laughs> There'll be a few Neapolitan love songs, a drop of Chianti, and she'll be in the back of his Fiat and halfway to Italy before we know where we are. After all, kidnapping's their national industry. But how is Laura isn't being kidnapped. She's thinking of marrying him. And when she's married, where will she be? In some grotty courtyard doing the washing, while he'll be sitting at a table on the plaza, sipping Campari and valuing her jewellery. <laughs> oh, we've got to do something. What? <laughs> well, I'm going back there. You can't, Howard. What will you say? Oh, I'll think of something. We didn't fight the war to put up with this sort of thing. <laughs> Alone at last, Laura. Yes, I thought they'd never go. The tall, pompous man. Is he a friend of yours? Howard? No, I hardly know him. Oh, good, because there is something about him I don't like. Don't trust him, Laura. I don't. He's the worst type of Englishman. He's an overbearing jackass. <laughs> Carlo, surely you haven't come all this way to talk about Howard? No. You know what I want to talk about. Ever since I saw you last summer, I have thought of no one else. I can't get you out of my mind, cara mia. I adore you. I want you to be my wife, the Countess Montefiore. Oh, Carlo. Please, Lord, tell me it will be so, huh? Oh, uh, still here, Count. Oh, what? I'm um, sorry to disturb you, only I've lost my lighter and I think it must have slipped down the cushion. Don't trouble, Howard. I'll have a good look for it in the morning. Oh, that's all right, Laura. I might as well look while I'm here. Sorry to be such a nuisance, only I um, I thought you'd be gone by now, Count. Don't tell me the Lambretta's broken down. Screw <laughs> Oh, that was just an English joke. That's what we've got over most countries, you know, a sense of humour. It never fails us, even during the dark days of the war, when we were surrounded by the Axis powers and the dictators were strutting half way. The Count has to be going soon, and we have something to discuss. Uh, where are you staying, Count? At the Majesty. I wouldn't stay there too long. It's very pricey. Knock a terrible hole in the old lira, particularly with your rate of exchange. No, I can recommend a very nice little pensione in the high street, very reasonable terms, and they do an excellent spaghetti. I don't eat spaghetti. What? I thought you chaps ate it by the bucket box. How <laughs> won't. Oh, that'll be your car now, Count. What a shame. I was so enjoying our little chat. It's all right, Laura. I'll see the Count out. <laughs> don't worry. I shall see myself out. I return tomorrow, Laura. Non dormero stasera. Ciao, Carlo. <laughs> What did 
you say it? I don't know. I don't speak Italian. Do you? Uh, well, I do have a grasp of the language, but I didn't quite catch it. Uh, where's he from? Naples. Oh, that would explain it. He's speaking in the accent of the South. But loosely translated, I think he said, I desire your body. Who? Oh, I knew it was something nice. Laura, you're not thinking of going back home with him, are you? Well, why not? Well, you'd hate it. You've heard the saying, see Naples and keel over. You wouldn't last a week. Anyway, what do you know about this man? What's he doing in England anyway? He has business interests here. Yes, and you're one of them. He'll be wanting to advise you on your financial affairs next, you'll see. Well, what if he does? I haven't done so well on my own, have I? Losing all that money and early investments. Uh, yes, well, it must have seemed like a good idea at the time. And a lot of aquas flowed under the old bridge since then, Laura. No, you've just had a narrow escape. And if I hadn't have mislaid my lighter, anything could have happened. No, I don't trust him, Laura. He looks shifty. Shifty? Yes. And deceitful. <laughs> That's um, settled. Uh, goodbye. On the phone again, Howard? Oh, don't look like that, Trev. No, it's, 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 it's money well spent. That was the inquiry agent. What inquiry agent? The one I've hired to keep watch on our friend Count Ravioli. You put an inquiry agent onto the Count? If Laura finds out, she'll never forgive you. No, she won't find out. I use your name. What? Yes. You've got an appointment with him this afternoon. Oh, and take your chequebook. You'll probably want something in advance. And tell him where he can find the Count this evening. Well, where's that? Oh, at the Trattoria. I've just booked us all a table. I suppose that's under my name, too. No, oh, no, you're not going to count the costs on this one, are you, Trev? After all, Laura means a great deal to us, and we don't want to take him to the cleaners by some cheap confidence trickster. We don't know he's a confidence trickster. Oh, yes, we do. He's not telling the truth about himself. He's after money, and he's probably got a prison record. Well, so have you. Well, that's not the point. Oh, and another thing. When I speak to him in Italian, he doesn't seem to understand a word I'm saying. Well, I'm not surprised. I thought it was Spanish. Yes, well, I must admit my Italian is a bit rusty. That's why I want your help. Me? Well, you went to Italy last year. You must know something of the language. No, I don't. Well, just say a few odd remarks to him in Italian. I don't know any odd remarks in well, Italian. Well, you must remember some. Trot them out over dinner. I bet you he'll be completely mystified. Not half as mystified as I'll be if he replies. <laughs> do I have to? Of course you do. Think of Laura. Yes, well, I'm thinking of Laura. What will you be doing? Watching his reactions. Oh, that reminds me. Can I borrow your guidebook again? I want to ask him a few more penetrating questions on his native heath. I've already caught him out on one or two details regarding La Favorita in Sorrento. Do you know he'd never heard of their excellent fish soup? Well, he can't be expected to know that, Howard. No, because I don't think he's ever been to Italy. All I think he's done is watch a few foreign films on BBC Two. <laughs> That's why I've booked a table at an Italian restaurant. I'm going to expose him. And when, when Laura finds out, his feet won't touch the terrazza. <laughs> Laura? So, ladies, some wine, huh? Ah, Yanti. And for you. Did you see that man watching us, Trevor? That's the private eye. <laughs> but he's wearing glasses. Is all I could afford. No. He looks short-sighted to me. Well, I don't care about his eyesight. What's his appetite like? I'm paying for that meal as well. I told you it's money well spent. Oh, well, I hope you enjoy your meal, Con. Si, grazie. I must say, I'm very surprised you didn't order the spaghetti con le telline. It's really excellent. Of course, one does have to eat it with a certain flair. The Count's already said he doesn't like spaghetti, Howard. Yes, I find that very surprising for an Italian. Where did you say it came from? Naples. Ah, yes, of course. Napoli. 
Very beautiful, beautiful countryside there. And of course, that drive from Positano through Amalfi to Sorrento, it's breathtaking, but I'm sure you know it well. Yes, quite well. Mm. Now, what's the name of that little place in Positano? You know, the one just past the main car park. You know, where the, where the road begins to climb. It's run by this family. They do an excellent homemade pasta and fried fish. I'm afraid I don't remember. Oh, you must remember. A white wall place. Closed on Tuesdays. <laughs> oh, yes, I know. La Caravello. Ah, yes, of and course. Very inexpensive at 6,000 lira. Of course, I prefer Amalfi, you know, the sandy beaches, and those Doric temples, unsurpassed outside Greece. Don't you agree? I didn't realize you knew Italy so well, Howard. No, oh, yes, I've traveled a great deal, Laura, but it's very nice to talk to someone who's actually lived there. What do you say, Trev? Dove la lavanderia fuori in Cina? Scusi? Volevo far pulire questi abiti. I'm afraid I don't understand. What's the matter, Count? Non comprendere? Seems very straightforward to me. What are you trying to say, Trevor? Quando sarà no friendly, pronto, fi. What is he saying? How strange, the Count doesn't seem to understand his native tongue. He seems confused by a little basic Italian. Don't you find that surprising, Laura? What are you trying to infer, Howard? Well, the Count not only seems to have forgotten his own country, but he seems to have forgotten his own language as well. E pronta la mia biancaria. <laughs> Trevor. No, but you see what I mean. Here is Trevor speaking in almost flawless Italian, and the Count doesn't understand a word that he's saying. Not only that, La Caravello is not in Positano, it's in Amalfi. And you can't get a meal there under 8,000 lira. And Amalfi's beaches aren't sandy, they're pebbly, and the Doric temples are in Vietre. <laughs> what does that prove? The Count hasn't been home in years, and Trevor can't speak Italian. He went to ask for two deck chairs last year and came back with water skis and a surfboard. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Still unconvinced, eh? All right, well, I'm sure the Count's dying to use his native tongue. Waiter. Signore. Uh, did you realize that you have a compatriot of yours here this evening? A fellow Italiano? Il signore Italiano? Si. Ma da dove? Napoli. A ah, Milano. Ah, è un onore avervi alla nostra tavola, signore. Grazie. Spero che vi piace la cena. Ah, la cena era superba, ma la sera è completamente rovinata <ride> da stessi battoni e basti. Eh? Sembra che può essere cattivo questo. Eh? Qual è la sua, signora? Questo. Vero che è bella, eh? Come un fiore rado. Come una rosa profumata. Eh, se fossi solo possibile a sparazzarti, eh? Questo brutto idiota. È un dolore nel sedere quello, eh? Ma, in ogni modo, vi auguro buona fortuna con la signora e spero che ritornerà al nostro ambiente, signora. Mille grazie. Te prego, signora. Italy one, England are nothing. <laughs> Doing? Watching Laura's house. Vermicelli's there again. <laughs> Howard, come away from there before you get arrested. It won't be me who gets arrested. I should have thought you'd have learned your lesson last night. Yes, you heard the Count. He spoke perfect Italian. He may speak Italian, but he's not a Count. He's not even Italian. What's more, he's got a prison record as long as your arm. Are you sure? Yes, the inquiry agents just rung up and told me. I don't believe it. Well, you soon will. He's coming round to present his evidence. But I don't understand. What inquiry agent? So oh, one that Trevor hired to watch the Count. Trevor, how could you? Oh, don't be hard on him, Mary. I mean, Trevor's the one that saw through him. Full marks of vigilance, Trev. But Laura will be furious. Not when she realizes that Trevor had her best interests at heart. But it may already be too late. She may already be compromised. He's probably raining kisses on her now, up and down her arms. I'm going round there. <laughs> uh, when the inquiry agent comes, bring him round. Pray God it's not too late. <laughs> Won't you reconsider, Laura? I'm sorry, Carlo. I suppose I'm too settled in my ways. I just don't think I could change my way of life. Not now. 
Are you sure that's the real reason? There isn't somebody else? Somebody else? Who do you mean? This man, Howard Booth. Howard? Oh, that's ridiculous. He's vain, he's totally unreliable, he's idle and feckless and an inveterate liar. How can I love a man like that? I didn't say it would be easy, but it's possible. <laughs> if I thought he was coming between us, Laura, I would not accept your refusal so gracefully. Carlo, there is nothing between Howard and me. Then why does he watch us all the time? He doesn't. No. Ah, well, um, that should uh, fix it, Laura. That doorknob's been loose for some time. I meant to fix it before. Now, is there anything else you'd like me to do while I'm here? Oh, hello, Kant. What news on the Rialto? I hear the Lira's taken another tumble. You, what are you doing here? Why do you keep pestering Signora Maezi this way? Pestering? We don't pester in this country, Count Montefiore, or whatever your name is. Howard! The Count's an imposter, Laura, and I'm going to prove it. I don't believe you. Well, here comes my proof now. Laura, I hope you don't mind us coming in like this, but this gentleman has something to say to you. It's, it's rather important. Yes, normally I wouldn't interfere, Laura, but I think you might be in grave danger. <coughs> Travers right. Now listen to this man. I've kept the subject under observation for several days now, and I can assure you without fear of contradiction that he is not a count, uh, nor an Italian nobleman of any kind. In fact, he's not even Italian. What did I tell you? Not even Italian. He was actually born in this country, and he's already served a term of imprisonment for misappropriating clients' funds. You see? The man's a crook. <laughs> this was during his association with a firm called Erling Investments. You see? Erling Investments. <laughs> Erling Investments? Yes, a notorious holding company, in which, incidentally, I lost a great deal of money. Now, further inquiries have revealed that he is now residing with his sister at, um... <laughs> 10 Elm Grove, under his own name of Howard Booth. You idiot! <laughs> you call yourself a private eye, you can't even see straight. You've been watching the wrong man. Howard, you mean you were earning investments? Uh, well, in a way, Laura, but I, I've paid my debt. Not to me, you haven't. You had my money. And my Erling investments, huh? Oh, no, not you as well. You ruined me! Thank you.